Don't even bother watching this video. It's just six minutes of idiots blathering on about nothing important. More now on politics and some surprising comments from both Bill and Chelsea Clinton. The father and daughter duo are stumping for Hillary Clinton this weekend. And joining me now for more is Andrea Tantaros, Republican strategist and former spokeswoman for the House Republican Conference and Democratic strategist and former vice presidential aide Morris Reed. Thank you both for joining us. So, Thank Morris, uh, Chelsea Clinton said something uh, pretty interesting on the campaign trail yesterday. I want to let it play and then talk to you on the other side. Do I think my mother will be a better president than my father? Um, well, again, I don't take anything for granted, but hopefully with Pennsylvania's help, she will be our next president. And yes, I do think she'll be a better president. All right, Morris, again, I don't know what else she could have said here. I mean, well, you're that's a no brainer. We all no know women are smarter than men. Come well, on. Morris, Who, anyone well, knows we that. We know that, of course. Come on, Morris. <laughs> I'm trying to humor myself and Andrea here. But there are some people who are saying, well, she could have said, you know, my dad was great and my mom will be just as good. You know, try to, to soft coat it here. But her mom's the one running for president. You got to give her 100%. Well, we know Clintons know what to say on the stump. And there's a <laughs> Chelsea they Clinton knows how to talk. They well. <laughs> And we all know that women are smarter than men, so that's that's pretty obvious. But I thought she handled it pretty uh, pretty swiftly, given the fact that on the heels of uh, the other question, the other infamous question right. from a student about uh, you know the whole Monica Lewinsky thing. So uh, we are seeing the evolution of Chelsea Clinton, who was this shy, awkward young lady who has turned into this very elegant professional, and she is cut from the same cloth as the other Clintons. Uh, who understands how to, you know, warm up to a crowd. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Andrea. Uh, Morris touched upon that question. She was at a Butler University, and a student said, you know, whatever about the Monica Lewinsky scandal. And she said, none of your business. Um, is that a reflection on her mother and father as far as saying, listen, this is the strong-minded person that we've been able to raise through all of these storms, through all of the political ups and downs. This is really who we are, and the best example, forget an ad, this is who we are, Chelsea Clinton. Yeah, I'm happy to answer that. First, I'd like to say to Morris, a flattery will get you everywhere. I completely <laughs> agree. Okay. But back to your question, Tamron. Um, I do. I think I think it shows, as Morris was saying, that she has grown into her own. She she can handle herself on the campaign trail, and. I applaud her. I mean, she's absolutely right. It really was none of their business. I mean, she's a strong woman, um, and I think it looks great for Hillary's campaign. She's on college campuses. I think, you know, Meghan McCain, Chelsea Clinton, the more they can get out um, their children on the campaign trail, I think, it's, I think it's good for them. But, you know, she comes out and says that she thinks her mother would be a better president than her father. She seemingly is a better surrogate than her father uh, on the oh, campaign wow. trail as well. She seems to be able to really stick to message, and Bill Clinton's <laughs> notorious for getting his wife terribly off message, as we saw in South Carolina. Carolina, so I think the more of Chelsea, uh, the better. <laughs> You're gonna start a family feud. Forget the primary. So I think Lauren, we're gonna sign her up for the uh, Chelsea Clinton campaign in uh, 2020. Right. You may be able to put your money on Chelsea. Let me tell you. But let's talk about Bill Clinton. Andrea touched upon some of the things he's saying on the campaign trail. He was uh, stumping in Pennsylvania, and, and we've got this clip of him talking about John McCain Morris. I want to know what you think. Let's play it and hear your thoughts. Most of us in this room, presumably, are Democrats, but I have to tell you that. I think Senator McCain is a very admirable person. After all, he's given about all you can give to this country without dying for it. And he, he, he is, uh, in Republican circumstances, he qualifies as a moderate because he was against torture for campaign finance reform, and he didn't think global warming was a myth. So, Morris, you even hear in that audio when he says, you know, he's given everything he can without dying for it, you hear the audience like, woo, like they didn't know if they were at a McCain campaign rally or not, and then they pull back with the applause when they realize they were there for the Clintons. What's going on there? Well, listen, first of all, John McCain, you, you can't help but to admire what he's done for the country. Absolutely. And he is a good guy. I mean, it's like, you know, one of the things that people were always afraid of was, you know, the John McCain factor, you know, if you remember the Straight Talk Express, I mean, if he was that same guy, I would really be concerned. Thank goodness he's changed and morphed into this real Republican that's sort of like George Bush these days. But I got to tell you, people are not concerned about John McCain. He's an okay guy. We're concerned about all the other people John McCain's going to bring with him and all the policies and doctrine from the Republican Party that he's going to continue to push forward. That's the problem with John McCain. If he was but an independent or a Democrat, But there's only one name on the ballot. Okay. But Morris, well, listen, if it, in the general election, a, it's may, just his name. And then if he plays or it, people it play is, this quote from name. Bill Clinton saying what a great guy he is and talking about global warming, I mean, this makes him... Uh, at least an attractive candidate for people perhaps who 
maybe you're on the fence. If you he hear Bill Clinton say it. He's, a, he's an attractive candidate. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, we understand that he's going to bring a whole mess of other Republicans with him. And we don't want those same old guys to show up in Washington, D.C. They've done a heck of a job of uh, putting us in a bad state internationally and in a bad situation financially. So, Andrea, what do you think of what Morris is saying? I couldn't disagree more. John McCain, as we've seen, is a master at reaching across the aisle uh, and working with Democrats. I mean, whether you agree with John McCain or not, and you like his policies or you don't, you have to be—you have to give him credit. He is a bipartisan innovator. I mean, he has come up with such creative, again, whether you like him or not, policies uh, on domestic issues, and he's done it. Uh, with help, with the help of Democrats. So I don't think John McCain is this conventional Republican who will who will pad his offices with uh, you know notorious Republicans. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if he brings on some Democrats and he brings people from the private sector and really a diverse crowd because that's exactly who he is. He's he's the uncola. He's the unbush. He's not the typical Republican. Listen, I could, I like John McCain, but the people he associates with scare the heck out of me. Mm -hmm. And he's with associated to wrap his arms around. <laughs> Uh, I'm, yeah, Joe Lieberman included. Yeah, Joe wow. Lieberman. You know, I'm I'm concerned Russ about Feinhold. Joe Lieberman as well. Okay, I, I don't have time to go down the whole list, so you guys will have to exchange <laughs> numbers and go over this a little bit later. <laughs> I thought you. I knew more, Morris. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Morris and Andrea.